At the height of the Cold War, we didn't have uh, four unidentified objects uh, enter North American airspace, let alone shoot them down. Hmm. Uh, so this is a very peculiar uh, uh, period in time. Uh, I'd also say that, you know, there has been uh, sort of radio silence from the administration about the salvage, recovery, uh, investigative efforts about the acknowledged or alleged uh, Chinese balloon. Uh, and then obviously you've got the, uh, the three most recent uh, unidentified uh, objects. And, uh, you know, there's uh, certainly questions in Congress from lawmakers on both sides of the aisle, uh, and then certainly the general public uh, as well. Uh, again, not to uh, don the tinfoil hat, but, uh, you know, the social media does tend to blow up with these things. And it really, an administration needs to get out in front and, uh, and assuage the fears of, uh, of the public and certainly communicate with Congress better. What's the most plausible explanation that you currently hear, and what are the implications for investors? Well, look, these are uh, these may not all be the same thing, uh, right? They could be different things, and I think that's perhaps one of the troubling aspects. Uh, it, it could range from uh, Chinese surveillance uh, to unidentified objects, uh, weather balloons, or uh, corporate projects uh, in, in the atmosphere, uh, you know, or or some of the more uh, Orwell Orwellian uh, uh, dis you know, descriptions. Uh, but I mean, even from a general aviation perspective, having things flying around, uh, you know, 20,000 to 40,000 uh, degree uh, uh, feet rather in altitude, uh, that's unsafe. And that's the administration are downing those things because it's uh, unsafe. So it really raises some questions about commercial air travel. I'd say we're just about ready to kick off that budget debate that you talked about uh, in Washington. And I would say that the group has underperformed, uh, you know, since uh, the GOP kind of came out with uh, wanting those, you know, what would be potentially 10 percent spending cuts. Uh, and, and really, when you look at the backlog in spending, uh, the two years ago, the budget was up 7 percent. Last year, up 10 percent, as Morgan mentioned. Uh, we, you know, uh, with our Cowan research, we estimate there's about $37 billion in funds for Ukraine that haven't put up, been put on contract for some of the large defense primes. So, there, you know, there, the pump is primed. Uh, and as soon as uh, we get into some of the budgetary details, uh, if any of that uh, overhang lifts, uh, certainly it's going to bode well for, uh, for the company. You, kind of same question. Do you worry about people who are buying the group now on these headlines primarily? Um, you know, you always think about when people bought all the oil and energy stocks last year at the peak. Anytime this, this stuff is gobbling up headlines, if anything, it's kind of a sign of a top. Though the fact we've only just gotten back to kind of pre-COVID levels for this group as a whole. I mean, give me a case for investors that you think there could be sort of sustained outperformance here and not just the usual kind of quiet, um, I don't, you know, performance that they've really been on display for lately? Sure. Well, well, one, I mean, I think most people would look at a multi-year scenario for the con uh, conflict in Ukraine. Uh, European defense spending is off the charts. Uh, Japan has doubled its defense budget. Uh, I talked about the growth in U.S. spending uh, and certainly the backlog in Ukraine. Uh, the other thing I think most managements have reported over the last several quarters that supply chain labor uh, uh, issues are, are sort of abating uh, and have been consecutively over the last couple of months. Uh, so the group is starting to operate better and deal with some of these things. Uh, and then you've got the idea of is, is, is defense going to grow even modestly? Uh, again, Republicans on the Hill, uh, most of the, the national security minded ones have been pretty adamant about three to five percent real growth per year. Uh, to deal with geopolitical competitors like China, like Russia. Uh, Iran seems to be uh, pretty vile, volatile these days. And uh, and you can never uh, discount what North Korea is going to do from one day to the next. Sure. Uh, so I, I, do, I do agree with your point, but uh, I do also think there's a pretty good long-term setup.